It's your turn to go, okay? Because we don't have. I'll raise my hand if I have a question. Don't do that. Just ask your stupid question. Let me see the booty. Let me see the booty. Three guys you love that you know. This is popcorn and beers, where some use tomatoes and others use thumbs. We use the stuff that gets you drunk. This week's episode is brought to you on my end by Strongbow Fruit Cider. Josh, what you got over there? Yingling. Yingling is like one of the most underrated great beers. It's, it's on the rise, some dude. D three vitamins. Oh, vitamins nice, dude. D. I don't know if you can tell by Jordan's complexion. He doesn't get out into the sun much. So, <laughs> so this week we had a return of the rom-com in Fall Guy. Uh, and I really, 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 really have thoughts that are not negative for the first time in a while when it comes to our butter on top. Because uh, we've had a run of just not great films. But this one was a lot of fun. We'll lead off with you, Jordan. What are your thoughts on Fall Guy? yeah uh, exactly it was a rom-com that's dude approved so guys you know take your lady out to see this and there's there's stuff in there for you for you. dude approved yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not just it's not too you know lovey-dovey it's got a lot of just dumb funny humory stuff and it's witty you know, like I took my little sister to see this movie and, you know, it was just, it was just cool. And things got weird. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was, it was cool. It, you know, it just, it didn't, yeah, it didn't just, it wasn't just all lovey-dovey and stuff. It was fun. Um, yeah. Gosling is great in this. Um, he's really just on a roll. I think he's found a really good place in just being like in these funny chick movies, like being, but just he doesn't overdo it chick flicks is what he meant there chick flicks yeah chick movies <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> um are we is that still a pc thing to say chick flick? i don't know man i don't whatever. know Rom-com, yeah. chick flick I'm, do- yeah. I'm doing my best i don't want to <laughs> i love Kendrick chick Lamar flicks so i i we feel like we can say break oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he I mean he's a stunt he plays a stuntman in this movie and he knows how to do cool stuff, but it's all a little far fetched. Like just because you're a stuntman doesn't make you, you know, Batman. Like I don't Jackie know. Chan. <laughs> Jackie Chan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you don't actually know how to, you know, beat people up and all this crazy stuff. As he puts it, Jason Bourne shit. He doesn't know how to actually do that stuff. Aaron Taylor Johnson, he's a great actor. Definitely needed more of a, a role in this movie. Like his character needed just a little bit more, like of some kind of development. He kind of just pops in and out of nowhere and like makes some faces and delivers like a couple of stupid lines that are just really dumb. Like, like damn. He could have been anybody. They probably could have saved a little bit of money and put it somewhere else and made this like a fantastic movie because that his <laughs> character could have been anybody. The fake movie that they make in this for sure could have at least looked remotely more believably like a good movie what is it metal metal <laughs> metal, metal shells s- storm metal metal storm? storm metal storm metal storm i think yeah metal storm like, yeah. <laughs> metal storm dude approved <laughs> yeah there's gonna be fire there's gonna be swords there's gonna be chairs breaking on backs and there's going to be so many pecs. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the music is great in this. The, the I love at the end of the movie they do like a a reel, like a like an actual stunt oh, yeah. reel with the actual stunt people in the movie. Yeah. That was a really great touch there at the end. It's very meta. This is the whole movie. It's a very meta movie. It's a movie yeah. being made in a movie within a movie whole lot of that stuff going on it's fun i would watch it again it was a pop two pop you know two. Pop two as well jordan pop two as well I, I i totally agree this movie was so much fun 
And I went into it, I was like, I'm going to hate this movie. I know I'm going to hate this movie. And then I was like, wow, this is so much fun. It's funnier than I thought it would be. The burritos. When you, see, you can eat all the burritos you want at my new shop. <laughs> yeah. was, he's, just, he, he's just housing the biggest burrito you've ever seen. <laughs> this is a lot to like about this movie. But you said Ryan Reynolds has found this niche that he just needs to stay in because it's working. I think Hannah Waddingham has. Like... She was amazing in this movie. She was so much fun in this movie as the producer that, you know, is guarding her star, her, you know, meal ticket. She was fantastic. Her, along with Emily Blunt, like, they had great dialogue together. The two of them had amazing chemistry when they're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And one thinks they're getting the fast one on the other, and the other one thinks they're getting the fast one on her. Aliens were funny. The way they uh, professed their love for each other was funny. (laughs) The aliens doing stuff in the backgrounds was yeah. hilarious. They always like took your eyes off of every scene. Yeah, the, what he calls for the mic when one of the aliens calls for the mic. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, the club fight scene was one of the most fun fight scenes in a long time. Ryan Gosling is drugged in his drink, and then madness ensues, and it was just hilarious. And you're right; he shouldn't be a Jackie Chan type. But that with all like the glow action and the outfit he's wearing to be cool still. So because because the girl was like, uh, you look just really old right now. So he has to put on like all of uh, Aaron's stuff, uh, all of the main actor's stuff. So he looks cool again. I will say this. <laughs> one scene got to me. One, one line got to me because it gets to me in real life. Right. So the girl goes, hey, where'd you get that jacket? And he tells her and she goes, wow, you're like really into yourself. And Ryan Gosling's like, I I mean, you asked the question. And that happens to me, like, quite a bit. Is I'm like, oh, so what do you do? Or who are you? And you tell them, and they're like, oh, okay. Like, that's really into yourself. And it's like, why did you ask the question if your only intention was to make fun of whatever my response was? (laughs) Like, like, I'm sorry you're so insecure that my story. Trigger. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess you're all about, you're so full of yourself. You asked what I did, asshole. Yeah, like, what do you want me to, like, you want me to, like, just kick kick some dirt and like be a little bashful about it i'm passionate about shit so that, okay I, that made me laugh because that actually did just recently happen to me where uh, an individual was asked me something about what do you do kind of like ryan ryan gosling gets asked what about that jacket and she's like you're really into yourself and his response is i mean you asked me <laughs> <laughs> almost exactly verbatim that's how that went down there's an actual, uh, there's a love actually, a- love actually line just for you, Josh, in the middle Ooh. of the movie, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, oh, Josh would have dug that. It's got probably one of the coolest dogs in any movie. So if Ooh. you are a dog fan, this dog, dog is one of the coolest dogs in any movie you've ever Jean-Claude, seen. Jean Claude, shout yes. out to him, man. <laughs> he only speaks French, so if you yeah. say good job, say it in French. Something about a dog responding to commands in another language, maybe besides German, it tickles me. It just tickles oh, me. Oh, I like German too. I, I understand the implication. Uh, but... it, it, it was funny. Jean Claude! <laughs> like every scene, that dog was. Attaque! Attaque! <laughs> when he's like, when the dog wants him to put his seatbelt on, is a fantastic back and forth between Ryan Gosling and the dog. Uh, it was it was overall just a really good movie. Like Jordan said, Pop 2, it. It's going to be a lot of fun for you. There is one one thing, one qualm I have with it, and it's just a trope. Every phone is waterproof now. Can we get rid of you dropped your phone in a cup of water so it's destroyed? Uh, yeah. It doesn't work like that. All right, so because, Josh, you didn't get to the theater to see this one, I would love to lead with you with our drunk classic. Kingpin? Tell me what you thought about Kingpin. So here I am doing everything I can. I used to love that song. Uh, yeah, yeah, Kingpin's good. Guess who's always the best in whatever movie uh, they're in? It's pretty much always going to be Bill Murray. Like, he had me with, uh, hi. Not you. Hi. <laughs> uh, he's so good. I found out with the trivia thing that he pretty much improv everything. They said he just, like glanced the script and got the idea and then just had his own lines and they just let him let him do it but uh where where was he for most of the movie like why would you is it that like he had a 
something else to do that day. He couldn't film all day. He's like the best part of the movie. He's in it for five minutes. What yeah. else is there the going to do with him? Yeah, he's the antagonist. What else are let they going to do okay, with him? Let me tell he's you. The let foe, me tell baby. you. He's boss. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what they do with Bill Murray. You got, okay, let me just pretend this movie never happened. You're the executive. I'm pitching a movie, right? I got Woody Harrelson on board. Do, 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 pitch. <laughs> I got Woody Harrelson on board. I got the guy who's weird. Uh, what's his name? Hezekiah? No. Randy yeah. Quaid. Ishmael. You got the Ishmael guy. He's great. Yeah, Quaid. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know who else we got? We got Bill F. and Murray. All right? We're going to make a bowling movie. And then you say, of course, sounds great. But here's what we're going to do. We're not going to do anything that makes any sense at all for at least half of it right in the middle like just for no reason like for instance that ishmael guy i mentioned the quaid the actor there's no need for him to be in the movie like why was he even there we could have just had a bowling movie but we had this movie where we're doing uh what's the what's the word when amish people go on sabbatical Anyway, Rumspringa. yeah, that rumspring of reality show. Like, just do that. I, I, I don't. What? Why? There was so much why going on, but not in a way that yeah. I was mad. I know I sound mad. I'm really mad. Uh, uh, it, they have to save the Shire, Josh. I know it's so '90s, dude. Like, yeah, that was such a '90s script. Like, very much. <laughs> so. Amish, we gotta save I'll something. tell you why. The Amish are just inherently funny. It, the jokes just come built in. It's just it's 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 it's, oh, it's an yeah, avenue for just easy writing for easy yeah, writing. I understand. Totally, yeah. I get that. But I just feel like it's the what in the end, Sorry. Ishmael didn't even bowl. It was it it was yeah. it started with Woody Harrelson, and now in the middle he's going to be a good coach, and we're going to do that. Never mind, scrap the whole thing. No, he does bowl, bowl sir. His bowling win end. introduces the female lead to the story. Great. Another character that yeah. didn't need to be there. Like the whole thing, what kind of movie is this? How and, dare you, sir? She absolutely needed to be there. Okay. Well, she's Woody beautiful. Harrelson sure. in the balls. <laughs> I, I I maybe this whole reaction is the um comparison of this to Big Lebowski. I just had to bring that up. It's criminal to think that this is anywhere close to a Lebowski film. That's I feel a like timeless only Jordan does that. Belongs in the Smithsonian. So you think only Jordan made that comparison? I'm not sure that's true. Yeah. Now that he said it, though, it, it, I don't know. Anyway, I give this movie a popcorn. It was funny in parts, a little bit meh. I just wish there was more bowling. They could have made a movie about bowling. They didn't. They could have made a movie about bowling and they didn't. I wanted to watch some pins getting knocked down. <laughs> they uh, could have done okay. so much more. I mean, they have this goal. They have a good concept, but they, I think they went a direction that maybe they had to in the 90s. Too many producers. Like, I don't know. They could have stayed in the bowling lanes and had a real good, awesome movie about the whole tournament. I was really excited when the tournament thing happened. And I was like, oh, like it's the movie's already half over. Anyway, popcorn. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Ranting now. A poppy. All right, Jordan. Yeah, I, it's, I think it's a fair comparison. I'm going to go back and defend this a little bit. It's a fair comparison <laughs> because other than movies about anim- Disney movies about animated cats bowling, um, <laughs> it's there's only two real bowling movies okay. like that are actually prominent, and it's these two. So it's fair that it's a 50-50 comparison. You either like this one more or you like that one. There's no third option. There's no um, – Alley Cats. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's logic. <laughs> yeah. What about Mighty Ducks um, Five? That was bowling. I'm just yeah. kidding. Yeah, exactly. The Amish are inherently funny. It's 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 like the one group that we all decided that it's still okay to make fun of. You know, <laughs> in the like nineties, not listening. In yeah, the 90s. Still, yeah, they're not listening. They're not going to hear it. <laughs> they don't care. They're not going to be offended. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's, it's a lot of just yeah random whyness in the whole movie it's like what was the pitch for this josh pretty much stole all of my notes that i'm saying he just said it in a different way it's perfect um it is also just a dirty feeling movie like you watch this movie and it's a lot of ick like everything is just like there's a there's a lot of vomiting there's a lot of just like ill stuff going on some of it's yeah. funny. Some of it's just. Uh. Why was Quaid guy? Why did Quaid guy get pimped out to be a stripper? And how is he making so much money on the line? He was just <laughs> racking it in, bud. You know what? Randy Quaid had a better body than I thought he did. So let's just stop here. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm in trouble. I gotta, I gotta calm down a little bit. I look worse than Randy Quaid right now. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, the ridiculous boob punching scene when the when Woody and the chick are fighting. <laughs> yeah, I just I just reject the complete absurdity of this movie. Sometimes it works. I, it. It, I don't. It, it's funny. It's funny, but I think I really want to give this a popcorn in one. But I think I'm going to give this a popcorn. It's funny. It's a good for the. The watch very far in between. It's like then it, it it gets you all over again. Yeah, I mean, I it's I wasn't mad at the movie. It was all right. No, let me just tell you, this is a story about a young man who has nothing but the whole world at his fingertips, and I really do mean these three fingertips, okay, <laughs> and the thumb. And in this movie, you see what happens when a innocent life goes awry when it gets in with the wrong crowd and learns all the wrong ways to live. And what happens is every once in a while, a bowler has to stand up and face the music. And tonight you're that bowler. Uh, (laughs) I thought that line from Bill Murray was hilarious as he drives away after Woody Harrelson gets out of the car. Um, The landlord scene is, is disgusting and hilarious. (laughs) Reminiscent of the exorcist almost. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It is grody on purpose it is gross on purpose it is aware of what it's doing i think the hair is fantastic the hair yeah. is great bill murray's hair one of my favorite have. things about this movie bill murray's hair when he's <laughs> did a lot of hair work there. there's yeah. a lot of hair work going on so, and Grandma's also beard. the the this guy yeah. is just good, wholesome fun. And he's grabbing her boob and stuff and trying to send her away by patting her on the butt. <laughs> like, it's it's just funny. I I think that there's a lot of it. Yes, it is crazy. It is, as Jordan said, it is gross. It, it's a 90s road trip movie. You have yes. to have a 90s reason to go on a 90s road trip. So they have yeah. to earn enough money to enter the tournament. And yeah. to do that, they've got to hustle all over again. And there's a checklist. They like, meet. Okay, there's got to be poopies. There's got to be ejaculate. There's got to be a vomit. Someone's putting on a dress. Oh. And like this is the, the '90s checklist for the yeah. If you're if you're following with the ejaculate, it all happens because they don't have a female cow. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give this one a pop one. If you just decide you want to let everything go and watch a movie that's just dumb. But 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 funny. This is a good movie to watch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want to see the '90s in a nutshell. Yeah, it's off it's the wall. Very it's off 90s. the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's very '90s. Like the whole love uh, story outside too. Of that, like, I don't know. Like like they they have this argument yeah. and then they sit down, they calm down, and like it's been like five minutes, and they basically say to each other, "Hey, do you want to just be in love forever now?" And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> like where'd that go? Okay. I mean, Josh, like yesterday I was a prostitute. A <laughs> he's got to deal with trojan for literally ever <laughs> oh boy good thing is we don't have to worry about his hand falling apart due to arthritis there you go that was a joke all right <laughs> do, 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 do joke <laughs> All right, so, sorry, I'm killing Jordan's eardrums every time I do that, so I have to stop. Uh, All right, so, Josh, why don't you lead the way with what you were watching? All right. Uh, I think last episode or the episode before or something, we were talking about your Spider-Man 2. You didn't like it because it was too much love. And I agree with you there. So I watched Spider-Man 2 because it was just on TV. I'm like, hey, we just talked about that. By the way, I just drew this. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, I'm really proud of it, Doctor Octopus, man. Ooh, uh, this is the Spider-Man hot. two with Doctor Octopus, who is a pretty good villain. I think they pulled that off pretty good. You can't deny the building clock tower onto the bus fight scene. Save the save the train with your webs and rip your pecs open. And then Joey Diaz said, "Hey, he's one of us." You know, uh, that's all iconic. That's. Pecs. That's forever cinema right there, but that doesn't make the whole movie good. The overacting, only some actors can overact. And those actors that do, nobody cares. Willem Dafoe almost always overacts. Everyone loves it. Tim Curry, same thing. Robin Williams, every time. one bad thing about Willem Dafoe, and I will lose my mind. Willem Dafoe, uh, he overacts, but in a good way. Like, he does it the way that you're, like, gripped to your seat. Not like uh, uh, Pineapple Express guy. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm saying Patrick Stewart. Like, they're such good actors that they act like they're they're just so animated. It's incredible. So that's a good version of overacting. But some characters, like, what's his name? Pineapple Express guy. That actor. Oh, oh James Franco. 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 Yeah, overactor. Not see good. Franco again, dude. Nope. He's done. Canceled. Canceled. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, Poor he's guy. He's never coming back. Um, big jerk. Anyway, so good. He overacts, and now we don't like that. The movie's okay, but there is, like, there's just the corn. This is a comic book movie, and Sam Raimi just makes sure you remember it. Like, when they're doing the bank robbery scene, and the bags of money have big dollar signs, and they're full of gold coins, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like, it's so silly, and you're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so I think that element is kind of not around anymore with comic book movies. It didn't take itself seriously at all. There were so many little quips and stupid lines on purpose. It was funny mm -hmm. in a way, but yeah, too much, too much romance in the middle. Too, I, I, I hate it when they take the powers from the the main character, like the Wolverine. Dude. Like he's Dude, Wolverine. Dude. Yeah. Don't make him yep. not Wolverine. And they did it twice. I didn't they anyway. Yeah. So yeah, I still give it a popcorn and two. There's a reason it's a big deal. And I, I, maybe this is a story for Gorp or something. But that seeing that in theaters for the first time. Also is the longest fart I've ever farted. Uh, <laughs> it's a long story. Anyway, that's what I watched. I wanted to do it again so bad. I wanted to give you the d -d 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 dude fart, but I, uh, I had back. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, uh, and then next up, uh, I watched Unfrosted with Jerry Seinfeld. We all Netflix. watched Unfrosted. Oh, shit. Hey, Unfrosted. Right this is the story. Right there. Do you not social cues? All right. I don't know. No, I just want to Unfrosted about is a movie. What is happening right now? <laughs> this movie was uh, on Netflix. Unfrosted. Right. Jerry Seinfeld. And literally everyone you like is in this movie. Yeah. Everybody Every that you like. Ever. Every little side, uh, or they were on a sketch show one time, or they had their own show. Reno nine one one, Lieutenant Dangles in it. Everyone's in it, and they play their Actually, role. Actually, huge miss, Josh. What? Huge miss. Maya Rudolph should have been in this movie. Mm. Where was Maya? Where was Maya? That would have made this movie so much better. <laughs> yeah, where Maya should have been Melissa McCarthy's part. Although I do like yeah. her in that role. So anyway, everyone's playing their role well. This is a weird, stupid spoof movie based on the true story of how Pop Tarts came to be, and they really lean into the fact that it's just silly. It really feels though that like even though everyone played their role well except for Jerry Seinfeld, um, I, it it was like it was written by Tina Fey's B writers, Jerry Four Seinfeld. Kids. It got like this. Honestly, watching this movie made me realize the Seinfeld sitcom was so great despite Jerry Seinfeld. That's my hot take today. <laughs> like the reason it's good is because of everyone else who was on that show, Kramer, etc. Elaine. The deal with this Jerry Seinfeld guy. Seinfeld, uh, and then Larry. Uh, is that his name, Larry? Mm -hmm. Larry David. Larry, Larry David. David. Yeah, Larry David's the reason Seinfeld his is the way it is. Friends call him LD. Uh, it was. It was so, it was so like saccharine cornball, like your grandpa's dad has dad jokes type of stuff. I couldn't stop watching it. I wasn't really thrilled about watching it though. It went on a little long. They were just having a good time by themselves. Hey, let's do a bit about Area 51 for a while. Okay. <laughs> Get everybody oh, yeah. in here. Let's do jokes. And that's what the movie was. And then uh, I, I, that's all I got to say about it, really. I am going to give this one. A popcorn. Ooh, that's a rare popcorn that looks like an octopus. <laughs> Ooh, I should make it an octopus. Ooh. Octo popcorn. Oh my gosh. Thanks, bud. Ooh. Octopop. That's cool. All right. Uh, I also watched this. As I said, I am with Josh. This movie was real bad. Like it was. It was ungodly bad. It was. It was so bad. It makes bad <laughs> movies look like good movies. It was a bad movie. Jerry Seinfeld was bad. Really bad. And I had to listen to him narrate it and act in it. Bad. They're uh, Amy Poehler. Bad. Not Amy Poehler. Uh, no. Not Amy, Poehler. Poehler. Amy Schumer. Amy Schumer. Oh, Amy Schumer. Thank you. Amy Schumer. Terrible. All of them were terrible. Except for Peter Dinklage. He is a godsend. And thank you for putting him in this movie. I disagree good. with Josh that everyone did a great job. I thought everyone was Jim Gaffigan. Terrible. They were all bad. Everyone was bad except for Peter Dinklage. And he Everyone was funny was as the mob hey, boss dude. of the milk. 
Those two heavy. little kids stole the movie. Those little, little kids, kids acted their butts off. They the were good. Two little Pop Tart kids. Yeah, they were the great. Pop Tart kids. Yeah. The movie had the a lot of good kids. little parts. Mm -hmm. I like the German guy. Like he made obvious German jokes, but like Nazi jokes. Excuse me. But like it was, it was funny. I guess. I mean, it was a lot of like, not even a chortle, but like you want to try to chortle, so you just exhale. Like <sighs> that's what kind of laugh <laughs> this movie was. I uh, I think the the weirdest thing is they uh, I don't think this is a spoiler alert but just in case it is I'm letting you know now there was such an unnecessary January sixth scene and it was so stupid and felt so yeah. lazy and it it was it was like they wanted to make a satirical take on January sixth using the Kellogg's factory and they in fact showed everything that happened in January sixth except for we all saw it happen <laughs> we all saw it ha we know how stupid it was. If you're going to make it satirical, make it stupid or don't do exactly the same shit that they did. We all watched it live. And hopefully, if you're a good person, we were all mortified by what happened. I didn't need to see it again. I was like, Josh, so this is where we're going with this movie? Uh, yeah, anyway, like this was a decision you made. Can you imagine, now that you, now that you mention it, can you imagine like being Hugh Jackman, not Hugh Jackman, Hugh Grant in the tiger? Like he's just sitting there in the makeup chair like, well, well I guess we're doing this today. And he's sipping his tea, like <laughs> just looking at yourself in the mirror wearing that costume. Uh, not a high point in the career, Netflix's but paycheck's cleared, man. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix's check cleared. I was an Oompa Loompa, and now right. I'm a Buffalo Man. <laughs> Jordan, where did you take this film? Uh, it's it's a popcorn as well. It's there's a lot of clever just concepts that were brought into this movie. Mm -hmm. that just didn't they didn't know what to really really do with so they just started throwing all this stuff at the wall it kind of but you know what? it kind of reminded me of a drunk uh drunk history episode really oh, yeah but gone bad yeah 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 they, if they did it drunk uh, history you know, style it's it would have been space way race and and there is just a lot of little parts that i really laughed at the, the janitors with the cameras Nah, that on was the funny. mop and on the car yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that really got me that, that was, cracked yeah, that was me up no guys i really laughed at that i was <laughs> dying at that part i really liked that part and and you know what? It's, this is just big cereal coming together to get some really big advertising the budget on this was probably unlimited it's probably why they got all of these these actors because like two mm -hmm. companies in the world own all of the cereal so they're just unlimited budget and it did what it's intended to do. It made me want a bowl of cereal and it made me want a pop tart. I hate pop tarts, to be honest with you. It made me want a pop tart. <laughs> and, so it worked. You know, it made me want cereal. <laughs> the, the milk cartel guys, that was just a great, funny little touch there. Yeah, that was cute. Peter Dinklage. The Mad Men. Bring in the Mad Men. It's, again, just so unnecessary in the movie. <laughs> did not, just yeah. made no sense. It, just a huge wrench in the plot. Like, why? Um, yeah, they're and just, just and then it it sure. starts. Yeah, John I Hamm it, and uh, McCarthy, they're just Dom Draper and her just going back and forth. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I thought it started off promising, like it was like this is funny. I like what they're do doing here, and then like it just started to tail off halfway through, so hard, and yeah. never recovered. Just kept just kept going further and further into the hole. It was on for about an hour and I checked how much was remaining and I was like, holy crap, this movie's only been on for an hour. It really <laughs> felt like it had been an hour and a half. Tops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely what it, um, uh, what it reminds me of is like watching some Adam Sandler films like Grown Ups. Now, and I'm not saying this is as good as Grown Ups. Grown Ups is good. Looney Tunes. But it honestly, like Looney Tunes movies. You're watching what you're really watching this show for is because you're seeing all these funny people that you like. You're like, oh, he's in it. Oh, cool. And how nice that everyone gets a paycheck and gets to have a nice day. Like that's how I feel about it. <laughs> what disappoints yeah. me though is like I had found out, or I yeah, Jerry Seinfeld has actually been kicking this idea around for years with his co-writer guy that he yeah. writes with. So like I'm I'm thinking this guy's been working on this idea for over a decade and this is what we get like I was really <laughs> you know I yeah. don't know they, sh they should have kept kicking it um, <laughs> right on down yeah. to the funeral home uh it's, yeah popcorn that's it popcorn yeah when when Josh was like what really made me sad about this movie I thought he was really gonna go with was the movie itself <laughs> <laughs> and keep it rolling sad face baby <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so Jordan, what else were you watching this week? So I also watched, uh, real quick, I watched the David Letterman interview special. He does his series of interviews with really famous yes. people. My uh, next Howard, guest. Howard Stern, my next guest, yeah, Howard Stern. He's great. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, whatever. He did one with John Mulaney, and it's really just uh, John Mulaney opening up more in a more conversational, realistic manner uh, about his drug use and all that. And it was just really, really funny, just like human. It was really good to yeah, watch. Man. So watch that. Super interesting. And then I also, I was on a John Mulaney kick right after that, watched his first installment of the Everybody is in LA live special. And it's just like this variety program that he's putting on. The schedule of it is weird. It's I think an episode is dropping tonight or Monday night. I don't know with the recording and dropping of this. It's, it's, it's dropping at weird rates. I don't know if it's every night whatever but it was funny he had a really really great opening monologue mm-hmm. and uh my hot take about this is honestly i think he's really really good at talking just about current affairs off the fly and i yeah. think he would have been the best the best if he hadn't come back to resurrect the show the replacement for the daily show i think he'd he would, been a fantastic host he'd be almost overqualified yeah yeah, I don't know about that. John Stewart's pretty big, but well, uh, that's I just different. don't know if he'd do it because he he's too it's famous his thing, in other yeah. areas. Yeah, like I think he's too too famous of a movie star, too famous of a TV star, too famous of a voiceover. He's, he's just such a prolific comedy, comedy writer. He's too busy. Yeah. Oh, here comes my dog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, those were both great. Go watch those. Funny. Um, the next thing I watched. Knuckles on Paramount Plus. Knuckles the Echidna from the Sonic Universe. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this this was not good. Uh, <laughs> I think I gave it a... I'm going to give it a popcorn and one. It really wasn't good. It's terrible, terrible acting. Kid Cudi is in this. And oh. he... His dialogue is terrible. His acting is awful. Somehow they throw in... They tease the guy from Game of Thrones, the Hound, the Gregor Clegane oh, yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. They tease him throughout the show as like, oh, the bad guy is coming. He's coming. And he shows up in the last three minutes of the show. And it's a very not good fight. They beat him up and it's over. <laughs> and it's just, it was dumb. It built, it was really built. It was going all over the place, wind, twisting and winding. And then it really just ended up nowhere. Um, Being anticlimactic. Yeah, the the main guy, the main who's in the first two movies, I believe he's the cop partner. I forget his yeah. actual name in the show. Cyclops. Just discount Jimmy Kimmel looking guy. Is that who he is? I don't know. Cyclops. Um, John Marsden. The voice acting is good. No, yes. no, 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 no. He's in it, but no, it's not him. It's the partner in the. Song oh, I know movies. who you're talking about. Yeah, if yeah, yeah. Can recall that man's face? He looks like Jimmy Kimmel, kind, kind of. of. Um, I love the animation style of these Sonic movies. It's very vibrant. It's the same, but it's different. Something about it is a little bit different, sets itself apart. The voice acting is good. The soundtrack is fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, and, and like, I, like I rival this honestly to like a Adam kid's... Pally. Yeah. That guy. Um, Pally. Yeah. Beat it. Pally. Um, hey, the kid, it, I, I, I was, <laughs> I, I, I liken this to like a kid's version of Peacemaker. Honestly, that's uh-huh. what it really felt like. It's what it really, that's funny. Peace, Peacemaker and kind of dodgeball. He, and it was perfect, honestly, for this week because its central theme is bowling. So, you know, <laughs> Kingpin bowling. I was like, Ooh, all right. We're in a groove here. Uh, oh, another man. weird enough theme, a major theme of this show is Judaism. It's cool. Really? Shout out to them. Yeah. And uh, Knuckles? Yes. Yes. Because well, the main Adam, character Adam man Pale, is Jewish. Is and he Jewish, takes. Yeah. yeah so the, he sh- they're on the run and they hide out in his mom's house and then they have Shabbat dinner. And it's the mom is great. The mom is fantastic in this. I love my favorite. One of my favorite things about this show is that the mom is like super Jewish and she calls him Knuckles with like the Knuckles in it. The knuck- <laughs> Knuckles. And that's Knuckles. one of my favorite things. I've been saying it all week ever since I watched that. My dog has, Just randomly. has been named Knuckles. Yeah. My dog's new name is Knuckles. 
<laughs> That's funny. Um, and there's a fight scene with the mom, and, and I love I love when they do this. It's very clearly a stunt person. Like I'm pretty sure it's a guy, <laughs> and you can clearly see it's not her. I I when they do that kind of thing on purpose. I I don't know if it was on purpose, but I yeah. love that you could see it. it. The whole show is most mostly just buffoonery. It's it has its clever moments. This just doesn't work without Jim Carrey. Mm. They they need Jim Carrey in to carry this franchise. I don't care how many times you have to kill, <laughs> defeat Robotnik. Well, that's an interesting take. It's interesting you that you know, you like I, I, I'm I was amazed that Jim Carrey got on board for Sonic the Hedgehog in the first place because he was already in that like I'm retired phase and he came back for this but he was so good as Robotnik or Eggman whatever yeah but he didn't need it he's Jim Carrey I don't know yeah but who cares I don't want to do this part but 20 million dollars is 20 million (laughs) dollars maybe he loves Sonic the Hedgehog maybe it was a passion project for him it might have been you know Uh, yeah I, so it, it, this just wasn't a very good show, but it was only six episodes, about 30. Some One episode was like 20 minutes a piece, uh, and it's it was fun. I honestly found myself enjoying watching a, a lot of it. I was, mm. you know, it made me laugh and all that. Uh, so I'm going to give us a popcorn and one. Pop and one. Poppy one. Poppy one. Mm. All right, so... For me, to close us out, I also watched Baby Reindeer on Jordan's recommendation. He is not wrong. It is a pop three, but it is a trigger warning movie. It is literally goes so deep into the depths of what can become the human condition when one just craves acceptance from others. And it is gross. It is mind bending. It is hypersexual. It is creepy uh i think that it it goes a long way in showing what ptsd can do to somebody and what the release of what's been holding you back can do to you do for you if you decide to give out this information uh it does a lot of uh suicide warnings prior to the show and after the show it gives a lot of uh abuse hotlines before and after the show it is intense what's that I said it is heavy. It's the it's that heavy. It's like an uh, episode of intervention. Honestly, it feels yeah. it starts to feel like that. It's quick though too. It's also quick. It's like thirty to forty five minute per episode. You're in, you're out. You want to see what happens next. They do leave you hanging a couple times where you're like, what's going on? To include the end of the entire series, you do want to know where where do they take this? And and it goes into the mind of the abused and how they how and why they may go back to the abuser it's intense it's an intense show it's a pop three we won't go too deep into it jordan gave it a great review i also watched dead boy detectives this is just a popcorn this show was called it campy it was it was it was annoying there's a few like um saving graces in the show a couple of the mysteries are fun uh the trip through hell was very good episode outside of that it's just yeah i don't know it's not for me it's there was a show called Sabrina the Teenage Witch that was a new take on Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and I think it might be by the same writers or someone was creatively involved because it's very similar to that. Okay. So just not my cup of tea. I was very hopeful because it's from the DC universe, and I felt like there's a lot of meat on that bone that they could play with, and they chose to play to the lowest common denominator and just be well, like, you this think stuff's the, popular now. Yeah, Maybe the kids will like um, this. Trying to grab some tweens. That was the demographic. Yep, 100%. That's all they're going for. They're going for like that. They're going for the audience that jump 22 Jump Street and 21 Jump Street makes fun of. That's who the audience they're going for is the audience that that movie makes fun of. Eco nerds. So (laughs) I also watched In the Land of Saints and Sinners with Liam Neeson. It's his new film that just came out. Liam Neeson's dog? Uh, No. (laughs) Liam Neeson's? So, so with this, no one's been taken. He's not mm. being hunted. No one's chasing him. It is just an old school Irish 60s IRA terrorist versus Ireland movie. And Liam Neeson's character is an ancillary figure in this, uh, you know, micro war in Ireland, right? Between the IRA and uh, the Republic. 
and he gets caught in the middle trying to help out a little girl that is being abused by what he doesn't know is the member is a member of the IRA. And then it, it just gets nuts from there. And I'm going to tell you, this is definitely a popcorn and two ish mm. movie. It is, it is interesting. It is good. Liam Neeson does not overact. He's very reserved in his role. There is some really good characters in this movie and it's a good watch and it's only like an hour and 40 minutes. So it's not going to drone on forever. You know what the story is. You get to learn his character. There's a lot of great dialogue that makes you think in this movie about what being a killer and being at war really is, right? Mm. And what the cost of freedom really is. And if you're actually fighting for freedom, or are you just fighting to fight? So there is a, a lot of dialogue like that in this. And it's, it's a good movie. It was fun to watch. It's on Netflix for free in the land of Saints and Sinners, Popcorn and Two. So Jordan, what is our butter on top this week? We are going to go see another installment in the Planet of the Apes saga. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> and it, this Kingdom? new installment is, is, is called what? Kingdom of the, the Kingdom Planet of, of the, the, the Planet of the, the Kingdom. Apes. There's too many ofs in that title. Yeah. The Kingdom, Kingdom of, of the, the Planet. Planet of the Apes. Kingdom yes. of the Planet of the Apes. Dude, apes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'm I, I'm excited about this movie, but kind of like we were talking about earlier, gentlemen, this has been one of those movies that has had a billion trailers leading up to the film, and I'm I'm really getting yeah. worried that I've seen all the good parts of this movie in the trailer. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, aren't they Fall always guys. this movie at Fall Guys? I haven't seen uh, the last few of them, but isn't it always though? Like, there's always a twist ending at the end. That's like the thing that they do. Has that been the case lately? I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know how you make any of the Planet of the Apes with a twist ending because all the Planet of the Apes came out in the they all 70s have a twist 80s, ending. So we know what the story is. No, no, no. Like no, um, we know what the obviously, story is. Like there's the I don't there's even the think famous that... there's the famous one at the end of the first one where it turns out he's on Earth the whole time. You know, um, and then the Mark Wahlberg. Oh, you're one. talking about with Mark Wahlberg? No, in the original. Um, oh, I know what you're saying. You're you're taking it all the way back to the original. I apologize. No. Yeah, yeah. But even gotcha. the Mark gotcha. Wahlberg one, like he goes back to Earth, and that now, mm -hmm. now President Lincoln is uh, the ape man instead. And so that they, yeah. it seems like there's always like a little, like the last thirty seconds is like what you know. That's like the thing they do. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Well, I know that only you know what this week's drum classic is. The drum classic. Well, I am torn between two. All right, I'm just going to pick. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Kiss. I have seen Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang. You have? It's been about seen it. forever. Jordan's yeah. never seen, seen it? it? Oh, buddy, you're going to love it, dude. It's got Robert Downey Jr., Val Kilmer. They're kind of like a buddy cop thing, sort of like the good guys. Or what's that movie with um, nice Gosling? Guys. Nice guys. So it's kind of nice like that. Guys. Uh, it's really good. It was one of RDJ's kind of comeback movies, sort of, and he's uh, real. He's really good in this movie. I, yeah. I appreciate that, and it's gonna be fun. I, I didn't know that Josh had movies like this in his arsenal for drunk classics, mm -hmm. so I'm excited about it. Thank you, Josh. I thought I was gonna have to watch something that made me think about nothing, and then something, and then everything for an hour and a half. Well, that was the alternative. Uh, so it was gonna be Scanner Darkly. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> but Whoa. kiss, kiss, bang, bang. So keep that one in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so uh, Jordan, where can they reach the show? On the X at Popcorn and Beers, and now on the Instagram at Popcorn Graham. and Beers. Oh, on the Gram, Instagram Beers is gramming instantly. It Whoa. needs some work. We're 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 gonna get this thing popping. This Instagram popping, but it's it's we got some posts. So go follow us. And uh, yeah, just uh, engage with us for sure. Let us know what to do, what not to do, what to keep doing, what to watch and what not to watch. As always, we will see you at the movies. You get the popcorn and we got the beer. <laughs> All right. <laughs>